it's a pleasure to be part of the top tigers india web series knowledge series uh, well i've never called myself uh, a tour operator or a travel agent because i i as as mentioned in the description or the profile description you may want to call it i'm basically an electrical engineer and things happen when you see mountains right so that's what happened to me when i went to ladakh uh, in early uh, 2010 so uh, i'm going to share our story when i say our we are a small team and as i say team work is dream work so we have been working in ladakh for the almost a decade now i would say 9 years to be very precise and uh, we started as a social impact enterprise we still are uh but tourism happened to us because without tourism sustainability couldn't be achieved in what we were doing um uh, more when you see the beautiful pictures and i take you to the mountains at 14000 feet ghe as they call it global himalayan expedition short form um we started our operations in 2013 in ladakh and you see me there wearing a blue cap it seems like i only have one cap but yeah, that's the way it is <laughs> and a solar panel and this is a monastery which lately many of you would have heard it's called the fuktal monastery or fuktal gompa it's in zanskar in ladakh and this picture was taken in 2016 when we were electrifying or powering up the monastery uh and you see a lot of young monks there and couple of engineers uh local engineers and the local councilor trying to see the stones from the mountain top should not hit the solar panel so this is a wonderful picture very nostalgic whenever i see it and that's the reason i've kept it the first and uh yeah i mean essentially uh, the last 10 years we have been conducting impact expeditions to bring about sustainable development in remote regions of the himalayas particularly in ladakh that's where we started and uh, what are these impact expeditions are these mountaineer expeditions what do you mean by impact expeditions what is sustainable development and actually is the role of a travel operator just about bringing about you know uh, lifelong uh, experiences or uh, something which only a travelers would remember for life and life but also for the communities can there be some impact they can do so the idea of today's presentation is what exactly is impact travel and how it can tangibly benefit the remote communities which essentially can be very important destinations in the future some some places which uh, which are still not seen are still remain hidden and that's the intent of uh, see if we can bring about development and get them onto the map and connect it so every company or initiative has a mission our mission was to bring about access to energy in the remote mountain communities today's figure we still have 798 million people without access to energy now you may be wondering why i'm talking about energy here this is a tourism thing and why is energy connected to it i mean assume any place you go any accommodation you stay in if you don't have light you will not be able to read you won't be able to charge your phones not about cameras and it won't be a good accommodation won't it be so it's very important that the basic infrastructure is available in the areas which will help in promoting tourism in a sustainable manner so our mission started with providing access to clean energy to the 16 million people which are in the himalayas and uh, they are in this most beautiful location as you see in this particular uh, you know this is the village of yurutse uh, most of the people know it as the area of snow leopard and this is just a one house village and uh, when night happens this is how it is you know still darkness around so there are most more than 16 million people in the hindu kush himalayan region which are still without electricity and if i go back to my previous slide this is how these regions are exotic beautiful uh, but when the night uh, comes in this is how it happens so if we can do something uh, contribute as a traveler as as an organization which works in these areas that is what i am going to talk about today and how we have been doing it in ladakh essentially if you look at it if you do not have basic facilities it will lead to lack of education and livelihood and many other issues in that area which will eventually lead into the migration of these people to the main cities and of course a lost culture and tradition so this was the kind of problem which emerges if you do not have basic infrastructure and we just focused on saying if we can at least provide energy to these areas uh, everything is built i mean mostly on energy i mean be it education today uh, livelihood or even connectivity so if you can give them basic light and if they can get basic water clean water from the government 
at least it will become a destination for travelers in future and the communities will also get livelihood in the future. So that was the overall idea and objective of what GHE has been trying to do in the last 20, uh, 10 years. And again, you know, you would have seen these beautiful images. These are the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In the process of trying to combine tourism and technology as a force of development, we have been focusing on four different areas, or I would say there have been impact areas for us. One is providing clean energy, uh, providing digital education access to these remote areas where still there are schools, there may be books, but there is no education on how to use a computer, how to get access to internet. And then of course, livelihood is must. If there's no livelihood, nothing is sustainable. And at the end, it leads to elevation of poverty. So that is the whole agenda of what we've been trying to drive over the last you know, few times. But what exactly are impact expeditions and how does it happen? We just don't parachute into a village and you know provide light to the villages. So impact expeditions uh, are basically expeditions conducted uh, by GHE to solar power the unelectrified off-grid villages uh, located in the Himalayas. That's been the starting point for us. So to make that happen, most of the villages which are not electrified are not on even on Google Maps. So you have to first physically go and identify those villages. So it can be going on a horse, trekking, driving by. And, and most of the times, the, the areas are only known by the local guides because they trek to those areas. So they know exactly which villages uh, are the villages which are deprived of basic infrastructure. So identifying is important. And then mobilizing the community, what the infrastructure would do for them. And who would bring that infrastructure? Most of the communities feel that it's either going to be a politician or a government or some kind of project which is coming from the central government. And when we tell them, no, it's going to be travelers who's going to come and stay with you and provide you light, uh, that is something which keep, makes them surprised. How will that happen? How can a traveler bring light? It's not a small thing. Of course, they may end up giving me a bit of you know a bag or a shirt or some money for my student, my kid to study, but bringing about light into a village, that is big. But for us, once we identify the village, once we have the community convinced, it's very important to get and build partnerships and promote those areas. So you see one of my colleagues there standing on the stage and trying to promote the village of Yurutse and see if anyone would be interested in partnering and providing light. And once that is done, uh, this is the last picture, the fourth one, uh, where you actually see the travelers coming in and actually setting up solar microgrids in these villages and bringing and transforming these villages from zero electricity to full base grid based electricity. So this is a wonderful picture taken in 2013. Hence you see it's a bit hazy because that time we didn't have very uh, good HD cameras which were which were part of the mobile I would say. So this is the village of Sunda Chenma. If anyone would have trekked, it's a two days trek from the nearest motorable road in Ladakh. Now it's one and a half days. And this is the view after electrification. And this happened just in one night. And there was no World Bank or Ladakh government which came in. This was just basic travelers who came in and gave them light. Now there are homestays running in this village. And there are three more houses which were built in the last six years in this village. So that is the impact of trying to give them basic electricity and basic infrastructure. So over these years, uh, I mean, we have been slow and steady and uh, that's beauty about it. Uh, and we have been able to electrify 152 villages. This is across Ladakh and Northeast India, Meghalaya, Nagaland as well. And uh, we have been able to directly impact around 65,000 lives. And of course, most of these villages use a lot of kerosene oil and diesel generators. So when we bring in solar, most of those are shut down. And that's the kind of offset we have been able to achieve. This beautiful picture you see again is of 2016. It's of the Lingshir Monastery. Till last year, there was no road. Now there is road to the monastery. So if anyone goes to Ladakh, and if anyone gives you an itinerary or a build up an itinerary, make sure you have Lingshir as part of an itinerary. It's a wonderful monastery, a lovely village of 100 households. And it is a gateway to Zanskar now. So again, I won't try to give you more information on that because there are more pictures to see. And you know, this all has been achieved through these 1300 travelers. Of course, there has not been much addition to this in the last two years because of COVID. Uh, but these from 63 different countries have come together to bring about light. And this was lighting of the village of Shade. There was an NDTV documentary which came in uh, a few years back in 2017. And uh, this is one of the remotest villages. This is actually a two-day trek from Fukhtal Monastery. 
Now, these people are not engineers, right? None of them was engineer actually, including just, just me and uh, Sardarji you see there. Uh, and that too, he's a mechanical engineer. The rest were either, you know, investment bankers or just trying to chill, come to Ladakh. But everyone had a mission. An objective is to bring about impact in the community. So they enjoyed, they saw the the, the exotic, uh, un, unventured Ladakh. And, and that's about, at the end, they gave them something to remember for life. This is the visible, visible impact once you electrify the village. Uh, one LED light, the impact it can bring. And you see, you know, you... We have never, I never dance when I switch on the switch in my house, but this is the reaction of the villagers uh, when they switch on the light. And you see the happy faces, some are dancing. There is a monastery. It's this photograph is of a monastery in Markha Valley, again in Ladakh. It's called the Techa Gompa. And when they got the light, the Lamaji or the monk was actually cleaning the walls of the monastery because it had a lot of dust. So you never know, it somewhere leads to cultural and heritage preservation as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, over the years, uh, we have been trying, we started with electrification. And also we thought as part of expedition, we'll also set up uh, some education access in the schools. Last few years, we have been focusing on setting up health centers uh, because we feel that that is something which will also add more safety net to the travelers coming in in this uh, post or you know, ongoing COVID era. And of course, with people looking for lesser crowded places, homestays becomes an important thing. And of course, carbon neutrality, everyone talks about climate change as much as they talk about COVID. And it's very important to make sure that as much uh, offset we can do, as much uh, removal of carbon we can do from the environment, that would be really nice. So this is uh, the kind of different interventions we have been trying to do to design these destinations. At the end of the day, it's all about contributing positively. I mean, we have got multiple words coming out or terms you may want to say. Travel consciously, responsibly, regenerative tourism, this tourism, that tourism. We should understand, just, just make sure whatever you're doing is correct and it contributes positively to the environment. And of course, it's always good to identify and design and develop these offbeat locations, which will actually lead to tourism dispersal because eventually people are looking for new areas and when you have villages which are open to travelers uh, in a very sustainable way, and the travelers are also very sure of what they are looking at, uh, this, these are opportunities one, any travel or tour operator can take up and work with the community to design these things. You know, as a role of a travel operator or a tour operator, it becomes very important to identify these new destinations. But just sending in travelers there I think it is also imperative to make sure what are the issues with the destination and if they can work with the local villagers or the administration to see if they can provide those things. It not only brings in uh, a lot of trust between the community and the tour operator, it also brings in a lot of change in the mindset of a travel operator. It's not just about sending clients or packs. It's also about making sure that educating them to the destination where they're going and why that destination is very unique. One such case study is uh, the village of Man. I'll come to that uh, later. So for us, over the years, uh, whatever we have learned by setting up solar energy in these remote areas. So we have electrified seven monasteries and uh, 20 schools and 76 uh, villages in Ladakh over the last 10 years. And we figured out that carbon neutrality is one of the important things which is coming out. And to make these destinations future-proof. I mean, these are lovely terms. But eventually, they all mean the same if you look at it. I mean, it's it's nothing fancy about it, be it inclusive tourism. This is something we preach, we talk about it, but how about practicing it on the ground and trying to set it up? And that's what uh, is the real deal, right? Um, and this led to uh, our another initiative, again, towards destination development. We said, there are not many travelers coming in now, so why not work with the communities, get some CSR funds? We have destinations, we have villages, which need development. So let's launch the carbon neutral homestay. So what is a carbon neutral homestay? This is a, uh, uh, this is again a one house village. This is the last village before the Siachen Glacier. If you see at the background, that's the Siachen Valley. And this is the last village wash. It's again a one house village. This has a, is a homestay and it was supported by the Royal Enfield CSR initiative. Uh, the idea was to see if we can provide uh, these villages with infrastructure, which is carbon, which has a low carbon footprint. It will also help create 
you know, a very responsible, uh, you know, uh, it will create responsibility not only among the host, but also among the travelers on how to, uh, you know, enjoy that atmosphere, but also uh, the, the experiences which we end up creating, uh, it adds a lot of value to them as well. So again, you see a lot of these colorful sustainable development goals at the bottom of this slide. So what, what essentially our carbon neutral homestays is, is basically it's about trying to see if we can reduce the carbon consumption as much as possible during a stay of a traveler in these homestays. It could either be, a, first of all, powering that house with solar power and making sure it has no diesel or kerosene use as for electricity. And then try and use the solar water heater, which is again very important, now water not only for cooking, for household consumption, but also for the traveler coming. Try and do more of reusable amenities, try and create water filters. Most of the houses are getting cement now, but older houses in Ladakh, they are all green earth building, right? So passive solar homes is very important. At the end, farm to table food, right? I mean, you actually, you, you have to, there is a lot of uh, focus on setting up greenhouses in Ladakh and even in Kargil. So, and that is even being supported by the government. So why not promote it and also connect it with the tourism because travelers coming there, if they can get the fresh vegetables from the farm, nothing better than that, right? So I'll just go in detail because it's about destination development. How does it look like? So this is a very great picture. It talks about how we were able to create a one accommodation which was carbon neutral. So it is a homestay in Washi. And you can see the kind of things we have done in this homestay. And of course, this was taken in winter, so it's not very green. But if it have gone in summer, this was totally green. And these are the kind of features a carbon neutral homestay, uh, not in Ladakh, anywhere in India or around the world. Uh, and this doesn't take much. It was basically, I think, uh, 30, 40,000 rupees per homestay. Uh, and there's a contribution which came even from the homestay owner. So eventually, we just went to survey or recce this area and we ended up creating our own homestay there. Now we get a lot of requests every day that can you create a trip to, which includes Vashi as part of the homestay. And this was able to do because we were able to do this in this remote area. And this is Nubra. A lot of people go to Nubra, but they end up going to Hundra and Dixit. Try the Siachen belt next time. And again, the idea is carbon neutrality is also, I mean, it was a fancy term to be very frank in the last few years, but it's become a mandate for many companies. And a lot of travel agencies are trying to get B Corp certified and talk about climate change, climate action, this and that. But in Ladakh, you see a good progress by the government, but also from the individual people as well. So we have been trying to see how much we are able to you know, offset because it's good to say it's solar power, but how much of the carbon are you able to offset? Uh, it gets technical, but let me tell you that. I mean, one day this all will help uh, in trying to tell the traveler what their contribution was at the end of a day, right? I mean, be it even setting up a homestay with solar power heater, uh, where the annual carbon offset is almost around two tons, uh, but eventually you will make sure that they don't have to go around in the winters or in the summers trying to gather cow dung. Uh, and not only their health improves, but also it becomes a great amenities for the, for the homestay and the travelers coming in. Because eventually it's not only about carbon neutrality, it's also about uh, a good lifestyle, a sustainable lifestyle, which you make sure these Ladakhi communities or any mountain communities would be able to follow. And again, uh, the, the, you know, a lot of these homestays and these villagers, they have these boleros and campers to get the stuff from the nearest market. We are trying to see if we can grow those most of things in that area. So growing in your own backyard, uh, farm to table strategy, this is a picture again from a Nubra Valley. This was taken again in early April, right? So it's not uh, those early summers, but still you had green veg veg vegetables and the temperature was around five degrees as well. So I think that is something which we are trying to see. And one of the interesting thing which comes is the toilets in these areas. You know, in the villages, it becomes very difficult. So this was a design we, we took from a Japanese uh, person in Ladakh who had done a similar toilet. And we thought, why not make a wooden toilet seat? Uh, of course, the seat is closed now. The back one, which is open, is the sand uh, putting uh, cabinet. Uh, but this is a dry toilet seat. And this actually gives the traveler the comfort, but also make sure the age old traditions of dry toilet are continued and not uh, connected or not combined with the wet toilet. 
Again, small things, very important. You see all these bistery bottles, we're trying to make sure that in the homestays, there are local reusable filters and glasses kept. So overall, if you look at the impact we have been able to create in some of the homestays in these destinations, which have become new destinations for us, is by just contributing little, getting a contribution from the community. And at the end of a day, it's not much. You have actually changed from five tons to 0.14 tons. Basically, 5,000 kgs, it has reduced overall to one, almost negligible. Now, you may be wondering, what do I have to do with this figure, right? What are you trying to tell me? I'm going to tell you that if you are able to do this, your infrastructure, your destination becomes more better environmental friendly and attracts the right kind of travelers and it can also be promoted in the right way. That has been our approach and we currently have around 15 to 20 carbon neutral homestays which we are promoting, which are again led and operated by the community. But this is uh, one of the things. And Village Man, uh, I don't know if, how many would have gone ahead from Spangmik, which this is a Pangong Lake you see in front of you. If you travel for half an hour more on the Pangong Lake, you will hit the village Man. And this village Man was electrified by us in 2019, again, through CSR support. Uh, it's away from the resorts and camps. So it's very less crowded. The homestays were set up by the community, again, through their own contribution. Most of them have greenhouses. So the food directly comes from these greenhouses. They don't go every day to the nearby town, which is Tangse. And the community is always engaged towards creating more activities towards sustainable tourism. So this is one of the case studies because this village had no light. I mean, it had a power plant, but it got defunct. So we came in. So we're trying to create this as a very interesting low carbon footprint destination, almost I would call it a carbon neutral destination of Ladakh. All right. And one of the interesting things which happened in this village is a setup of astro stays. So combining astronomy and homestays together to you know, create something which we call it a community led astro tourism. This is a telescope, right? It's not a missile. It's a telescope and these are the youth from the village who have been trained as astronomers to give this astronomy experience to the clients. And this is a picture just taken a month back. And uh, well, of course you have China nearby, that's another story, but wonderful uh, night skies. And if something is led by the community, it engages traveler more and it defines a lot of development around that area, be it women empowerment or be it livelihood creation or it even boosting the local economy. When you have a multi-stakeholder approach, it really takes a lot of uh, thing. And this was not easy. We didn't again parachute into the village. This required, you know, teaching the locals uh, from multiple villages to, uh, you know, on, on astronomy basics of how to operate a telescope. And this culminated into, you know, going to Lada, to Man, mobilizing the community because the community has to come together to motivate their youth to do the session in the night because the sessions only do it uh, start at nine o'clock to sometimes go till 12 o'clock in the night. But what the travelers experience is, you know, seeing Jupiter, Saturn, galaxies, uh, stars, formations, which you would or I would never ever see in Delhi or Bombay or Bangalore or Chennai. And uh, this is what the interesting thing about uh, the carbon neutral homestays uh, in Man is. Uh, and this again, uh, these uh, villagers came back to lay and we identified more destinations which wanted to learn uh, astronomy. The communities, these are all villagers. Uh, women came from different villages to train on the, uh, on the telescope. And then we asked them to set up homestays in their, in their houses, which will, in, their, in their villages, which we call them astro stays. So currently there are six uh, astro stays in Man. And then we trained them on uh, digital apps specifically for uh, curating these experiences. And in the night, these are the sessions. You see travelers, I mean, there were people who even came from the nearby camps. They were not staying at home stays, but they wanted to have the astronomy experience. It is just one telescope and it's about training two or three youth. And you even saw the, his, uh, there was a Rinpoche from Fiang Gompa. He also came in uh, to see that. And um, this has been the impact. Uh, the reason I'm sharing the impact is because if you cannot measure what you have done on the ground, it makes no sense. So be it measuring the carbon, being measuring the community so income, it's important to tell the community, you know, this is how much you've earned through this so that they feel empowered and they also embrace the future travelers. So this has been the impact of the Man Village as to stays itself. And again, uh, the company, community has been very helpful and very engaging and they have used those funds to, you know, kind of, uh, uh, you know, buy 
water heaters for winter tourism. And they're also setting up uh, greenhouses now. So the money earned from the astro tourism is now being reinvested in the community uh, towards sustainable infrastructure, which again is a very big highlight uh, for a destination because the nearby camps are wonderful, they are luxurious. But when you want to go into sustainability aspects of it, they may not be the best around it. And that's and these are the times when people are questioning those things, right? And this is what uh, you know we call the tourism. And again, for us, it's not about just putting things together in, uh, or doing things in silos. We kind of, we have designed an app. And so for example, you may want to say, I'm a tour operator, I, I don't, I'm not into designing of apps. Well, uh, you don't have to design it yourself. You just have an idea and there, India is, is a software you know, destination, right? You can find anyone uh, and you can uh, have a, an app which promotes your own destination in your own way. Uh, for us, uh, we are promoting those unique areas of Ladakh. Uh, we have these are very uh, for me it's very renowned areas Merak Mahan Chishul, but we are also uh, putting areas of Zanskar where people have a lot of queries, a lot of travelers have where is this, how do you go that? So we're trying to put this in an app together, and this will be available uh, starting first September. It's the Mountain Homestays app. The idea is it's open source. Uh, it's just an informed. It's like a Wikipedia, right? So we are not charging anything for it. It's about trying to bring out one destination or one region as a whole outside. And we move to Nagaland or Meghalaya, we'll keep putting those villages, data, homestays, and we get to see all that. So for us, uh, of course, doing uh, sustainable development, getting these destinations out is important. But at the end, the culture remains to re needs to remain the same. The local community needs to engage, right? So this is the ultimate. And, and of course, can you combine the old traditions with the new thing, which we call carbon neutral stays? I mean, Carbon neutral was already there. It's just that we removed, uh, there was a huge use of fossil fuels. If the technology can remove that, it's almost same, right? And these are beautiful rooms, which anyone would like to stay in these places in the future as well. So just small areas where we are doing it. Uh, yeah, a bit of marketing about ourselves. Uh, sometimes it is important. <laughs> so for what work we did, we were awarded as the first travel company to win the UN award last year. And of course, uh, some of the awards uh, which we have won for our work. And uh, to be very frank, we're a very small team. Uh, we, re we recently had an office. Now we don't even have an office because of the COVID. So whatever we have done is just because of the community and the initiatives we have driven. Uh, so this is what we end up doing. You know, We're trying to create sustainable destinations uh, when the season is off. And then when the season is on, we're trying to promote them for travelers so that they have a lifelong experience and the communities uh, have something to share with them uh, something they admire, something they value, that, hey, tourism and travel is not bad. It does bring in positive impact if done in a right way. So, well, this is about us. Uh, thank you again.